you know, we did that video uh, about, why am I blanking on her name? The New York Times reporter or columnist, uh, Barry Weiss. So she went on the Joe Rogan show and exposed herself to be an unbelievable lightweight who's only propped up because she's willing to parrot establishment talking points, right? She's n- nothing. Uh, and, um, and, and that video that we did making fun of her was so easy. It was almost like taking candy out of a baby. And, and, and it's gotten over 2 million views. So our most popular video. And so I think it's because it just reveals the New York Times for what they are, right? Like they are, they are manufacturing consent. Okay, that's what the New York Times is. And so now there's a there's a writer there named Maggie Haberman, and um, mm-hmm. Maggie Haberman has been revealed. Uh, well, she wrote an article. Uh, defending Hope Hicks and because she's going to have to maybe testify against the president. She was employed by the president and a lot of people came down on Maggie for that article. A lot of people on the left and Maggie has, uh, you know, uh, she's compromised like, like most of the journalists are and here I'll show anyway. So she, she wrote that article. People attacked her on the from the left, or people crit- critiqued her from the left. Put it that way. And then Jonathan Chait. I don't know if you know who that is. He's another horrible, horrible writer and gainfully employed by the New York Times. He got the Iraq War wrong as loud as anybody could possibly get it wrong. That's who Jonathan Chait is. And he wrote a book about what a great president Barack Obama was. So you know who Jonathan Chait is, okay? So he wrote an article defending Maggie Haberman. Could you pick a worse guy to defend you? <laughs> so Jennifer Palmieri, who used to be a Clinton campaign staffer, she was, I believe, their communications director. I'll double check that. So here's the, uh, the, the article is, of course, Trump hates Maggie Haberman, but why does the left? The weird resistance campaign against the toughest and best White House reporter oh. ever. <sighs> okay. So Jennifer Palmieri, who is a... Clinton campaign staffer says, Lord knows I've had beefs with the New York Times, but Maggie Haberman is one of the best, most perceptive, thorough journalists I've ever, ever worked with. Glad someone with her talent is at New York Times to cover this deeply troubling time in American politics. Okay, well, I just want to let you know, uh, as Glenn Greenwald pointed out, uh, Hillary Clinton's longtime top advisor and press aide heaps praise on Maggie Haberman. Irony of all this controversy is that a secret 2016 Clinton campaign memo identified Haberman as a friendly journalist Mm -hmm. who could be counted on to tee up stories. And do you want to see where it is? So it says this is on the internal Clinton document. It says earned media and the next steps, January 2015, place placing a story. So this is interesting because it shows us a little peek behind the curtain of how campaigns, political campaigns, uh, use the media and manipulate them and that and, and ultimately to manipulate you because you think it's coming straight from the news media, but it's not. It's actually a planted story, which is what this is called placing a story. So if you read the first paragraph, it says, as discussed on our call, we are all in agreement that the time is right place a story with a friendly journalist in the coming days that positions us a little more transparently while achieving the above goals. So there was a whole bunch of goals up there uh, uh, on the top of the story. I'm not going to show you. And then underneath it says, who? Well, who, who should we place the story with? Well, for something like this, especially in the absence of us teasing things out to others, We feel that it's important to go with what is safe and what has worked in the past and to a publication that will reach industry people for recruitment purposes. And then here we are here. Watch this. We have we have a very good relation have has a very good relationship with Maggie Haberman of Politico. That's when she was with Political. Now she's with the New York Times. Of Political, over the last year, 
We have had her tee up stories for us. And have never been disappointed. (laughs) Never been disappointed. While we should have a larger conversation in the near future about a broader strategy for re-engaging the beat press that covers Hillary, for this week, we think we can achieve our objective and do the most shaping by going to Maggie. So that's who Maggie is. It's interesting, too, a little bit of more of a peek behind. They show you... Uh, how they're going to set this story up. It's some kind of a, I didn't know they went into this much of a detail to plant a story, but here it is. I'll, I'll, I'll read this to you what it means. It says, or what it says, it says mechanically, the story will have three basic components. First, a list of names that we agree upon beforehand that will, we will give to a reporter on background. So we're all going to agree. Here's some names to give to a reporter. If he wants to check on this story. Also, both policy people and campaign people. Second, some information provided on background that explains what is happening and why. And third, a quote on the record that affirms all of this is an official capacity, in an official capacity, making clear that this is a sanctioned story. So they're figuring out how they want this story to appear and how they want it to be written. They just figured it out. They wanted to, they were going to have to get a quote from someone on the record inside the campaign, check, make it sure it's a sanctioned story. We got to give some, we got to pick out who we want these other reporters going to for information on this story. We got to pick those people. And here's some of the people they picked. For policy, let's go with Joe Stiglitz and Paul Volcker. More names available if and when it's helpful. And we should revisit it if for how to give people a heads up if before. And then from the campaign, we could have them contact John or Joel and Robbie. They're already out there. How about Teddy Goff or how about Wendy Clark? It's kind of amazing how they act. Did, Steph, isn't it kind of amazing how deep they go into it? I didn't know. Pretty that, detailed I how they're going to manipulate us. So, by the way, here's that story that they wrote about in, in, in called The Intelligencer by Jonathan Chait. Uh, of course, Trump hates Maggie Haberman. Why? There's a left. Okay. And it's a, just a bullshit article. It's nothing. Or, it's all pretend about how Maggie Haberman's a great. Um, so I just want to put oh, no, one more thing to remember. Uh, uh, Amy Vanderpool uh, tweeted this out. She says, a reminder that Maggie, Haber, uh, Maggie Haberman's mom, Nancy, is an executive vice president at Rubenstein PR. Why is that a big deal, that her mom has a job at a PR agency and Maggie Haberman is the White House reporter for the New York Times? Why is that a big deal? Well, that firm, Rubenstein PR firm that her mom works for, has represented Fred Trump, Donald Trump, and Charles Kushner. So Donald Trump's PR person is the mother of the reporter the New York Times put on Donald Trump. Uh, and as uh, as Kat Dam says, reason number 72, I canceled my subscription to the New York Times. Ha. So that's the shit they don't tell you. That's the stuff they don't... And, I just and 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 guess who else doesn't tell you that? Jennifer Palmieri doesn't tell you that. And she doesn't tell you about that this. She doesn't tell you that. They always we always went to Maggie. I've had my prop, but Maggie's the best. Why? Because she always pl- does the planted stories we need exactly like we need them to be done. That's a classic, classic Clinton, classic sociopath. Classic sociopath, Jennifer Palmieri, classic. She's the one who said, hey, just because there's 700,000 people marching against Trump doesn't mean we should go $15 minimum wage. That's what she said. That's her. So um, it just goes to show you the uh, incestuous nature of corruption in our culture. We only have six companies that own all of these, uh, all of our news outlets, all of our Everything, six companies. So that means billionaires run our news. And that also means billionaires run our politicians. As the Cambridge study revealed, 
We don't have a say in what legislation gets done. Only the top 10% of wage earners have a say or their feelings or their desires get reflected in legislation. Ours never gets reflected. Isn't that interesting? Who's does the billionaires? Who are those billionaires? The guy who's also own the New York Times, the Washington Post, MSNBC, CNN. And who works for them? Well, Jennifer Palmieri works for them. So does Maggie Haberman. So does Donald Trump. So there you go. Uh, it's so a, Jimmy, where am I supposed one, to get my news? It's one big, it's one big capitalist gangbang, and you're not invited. As George George Carlin said, it's one, it's a big club, and you ain't in it. Isn't that interesting? I think it's very interesting, and it's just more reason why uh, politicians and their and their uh, mouthpieces like Jennifer Palmieri, who fucking drove this country off the cliff, her and the Clintons and the neoliberals and Joe Biden and Bill Clinton, deregulated Wall Street, exploded the prison population, gutted welfare. Did all that stuff at the same time they did Iraq, Libya, kick people out of their houses, made the banks bigger, opened the Arctic up, the tw drilling twice, put fracking pipes all over this goddamn country. That's her. That's her. She's the moral superior to no one. Jennifer Palmieri, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama. They are the moral superior to no one. Um, and there you go. And there's her mom. <laughs> and there's her mom. Donald Trump's PR person. <laughs> Fred Trump's PR person. Hey, we just added St. Louis and Honolulu to our live tour schedule. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a link for all the tickets for all our live shows. We might be coming to your town. Go check right now at jimmydorecomedy.com. And if you like the show and want to support it, become a premium member. You can become a patron or through PayPal or go right to jimmydorecomedy.com and become a premium member. That's the best way. We'll see you at a live show.